Once upon the olden days, a walking top hat by the name of Elijah Hargreaves decided he was sick of watching his child labourers graft away in his woollen mill in the thickets of Lancashire, and so he spent some of his enormous savings on a train ride to the coast. He passed through Lytham, a budding fishing town under the ownership of the Clifton Estate, and continued from there towards the next stop in Blackpool. Between them, for no reason whatsoever, he stood up, lit a pipe, recited his favourite haiku, and then jumped fearlessly out of the moving carriage. He set foot here, or moreover, on the sand dune which used to cover this spot of land. Ahead of him was a lighthouse for the fishers at nearby Kilgamon, where the village took its name from its distinguishing feature, Hay Houses. 120 years later, this spot has been named in honour of the beacon. Lightburn! The story goes, the top hat strolled along the marshy, mossy, duny wasteland and saw potential, somehow, for a town. A grand town. A town of highs and lows that bred everything imaginable. Riches and ruin. <coughs> Sophistication and squalor. Fun and failure. Sun and shit. The Top Hat's opiate dreams were to be realised on the back of an enormous stash of slave money. And by the 20th century, Lytham, the quaint jewel on the chin of a mountainess, had grown an inspiring, peculiar tumour. Torn between its own pomp and the ruthless raggedness of Blackpool, the town had a remarkable development, becoming as terrifically drab as it is terrifyingly abject. And today, well, today, I live here. Welcome to Lytham Stannis. <laughs> The weather of Lytham Stannis and its unruly neighbours upon the Foudy coast is the result of a particularly complex meteorological mixing pot, with warm currents from the Atlantic and some shelter from winds granted by the whacking great mass of Ireland to the west, summers are reasonably not bad. The sea, the largest piece of thing in the area, serves to narrow the range of temperatures the township experiences throughout the seasons though there is a noticeable cooling effect as far as two degrees as a result of the coldness of the local population's hearts. This arctic affliction of nastiness has much to do with the average age of the Lytham Stannis population, which is consistently a few days below the national life expectancy. With its quaint flower displays and abundant nothingness, Lytham is a popular haunt with rich folk approaching the end of their miserable, miserly existence, while Stannis is much the same if a little more tailored to those looking to see out their days early in a surprise brawl outside a takeaway, or at the hands of the little-known Granny Mafia. It is a well-known fact that it has been windy here in Stannis for at least as long as wind has existed. Local bluster enthusiasts often spend their weekdays enjoying the frustration on the town's mile of beautiful brown bitch. Sand! Let's talk about it. Stannis Pie was constructed out of thin air seven days ago. And it has attracted attention from a lot of various groups Right. 
This was the world's first suspended gaming arcade run entirely on fossil fuels. And there are still signs of it here today. One of the least known examples is on this here wall. Uh, I can't find it. in the wrong town! Stannis Chastis Chastity at Baptismantism Church on Standrews Road opened on the 23rd of April 1910. In a severe gale of wind and fierce sandstorm. This historical account has since been adopted by a thriving local community of climate change deniers. The date is Tuesday, the late 19th century, and plans are coming together. The conference cannot decide on a sure method of naming the roads that would crisscross noughts and crosses battleships killer Sudoku, the new town of Stannis, noteworthy for their American grid pattern. A great variety here in the UK, United Kingdom of the UK. A designated road naming man was hired and he took to thematic road namings immediately. Back roads were named after rivers, such as Irwell, Goitz, Don, Riblet, Dove, Avon, Dee, Douglas, Tweed. While the saints themselves share their own long thin bits, z -z Leonard, David, G who managed to get himself an avenue and a road, Patrick, Andrew, Alban, Hilda, Paul, Thomas, and of course, Anne herself. One of the most popular naming traditions was picking an obscure location on the other side of the country from Stannis, which had nothing to do with the place, and use that. Tradbeck, Roma, Scarbandil, Falkestane, Rydell, Harwu, Margate, Dove. Uh, 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 sorry, Dover, Walmer, Ramsgate, Whitby, Elmhurst, Hovey, that's not even in this country, mate, Jorge, Banbrook, Leamington, Skidmet Marks, Aferwich, Windsor, Windsor again, Oxenver again, Bridge over the River Quire, Fresh, Hungary, Pride, and Pembroke are all examples of this convention. There's also a hay market where there was no hay, no market, and a singular single lone road named after a law well done that man let's have a look around stannis itself hold on a mo hold on a moment terry okay before you set about the place there are a few tiny little things that you might benefit from keeping an eye out for potholes cobbles Dog. Well, I just got it cut. No man's land. Local businesses. I cut it myself. This broken fence. Health and safety. This man. And stop, look, listen, beware of trains. Warning, trespassing on the railway can cause a thousand pound fine. <laughs> understand what you're saying. Can you translate? She likes you. Locals live in permanent fear and terror of who, what or why lives in the abandoned life-mongering complex down this here highway. We would take you further 
but a combination of toxic fumes and a horse pose a serious threat to the well-being of cameras and innocence. But do not be too alarmed. There are definitely a whole host of lovely places in the township, such as this waterfall, and this bone mill crusher, and balls. This is a park. Park Road? Named such because it leads to the road which leads to the road which leads to Ashton Gardens which has a park in is one of the oldest roads in the world that can simultaneously be found here in Lytham Stannis. Now, the elephant in the room is where Lytham ends and Stannis begins. This matter is made both simpler and more difficult by including the nestling villages of Ansdell and Feyhaven, oft referred to as one location, as in their shared Ansdell and Feyhaven train station. There it is. Woodlands Road, the quaint high street straddling the rail line, serves as a pleasant cut-off point between Lydham and Stannis, and so look no further if you don't mind overlooking the little villages themselves. But that's for half job, Harry, and like-minded little shit. I want to know what makes Lytham Lytham? What makes Stannis Stannis? What makes Ansdell Ansdell? And what makes Fay Haven Ansdell too? Here I am with a somewhat outdated copy of the local ads. As you can see, it's completely fucked. So here is a map dot Google. Here we see the aforementioned Woodlands Road. And over here is the college, which claims it's in Ansdell. And Ansdell seems pretty happy about this. But what about Fay Haven? Well, over here is the lake. Seems pretty simple. But then we come over here and we see Fayhaven Golf Club and that cocks it up a little. There's also a Fayhaven Road all the way over here, but that's clearly in Stannis and so about as useful as a chocolate a Brexit. It means Brexit and we are going to make a success. <clears throat> so, focusing solely on this area and using the railway station as a centre point, it seems that Fayhaven is here and Ansdell is here. Everything this way is Stannis, and everything that way is Lytham. It's actually pretty simple. If you have a degree in the bastard. Lytham! Where did it come from? Who are it? About the what the local high street democracy change. When? The people of Lytham are giants. Not in stature, but in ego. You gentlemen and tradesmen who ride about at will Look down on these poor people, it's enough to make your krill Look down on these poor people as you ride up and down I'm sure that it's a god above will bring your pride quite down, you tired Still here, and I'm on this huge piece of green So what do they call it? Oh, well, we call it Lytham Green, what are you, a fucking idiot? Coming to Lytham Stannis? There's an absolute plethora of things to pretend to do. There's at least three churches visible from anywhere in the town. Estimates say there's about two places of worship per person in the area. And there's also great shopping opportunities if you're after handbag, charity clothing, a haircut, a tan, or milk. For the kids, there's pubs. Everywhere. Nearby is the new local attraction of the du Gra dubious fur of influence slurging its way into the lush countryside behind the town at the hands of questionable energy firm Quadrilla who want to mercilessly drill our innocent land and shove their dirty pipes right up in there for their own profit and leave the consequences which could be grass which could be dire, nay cataclysmic to the already violated population of the township. GRASS! There's a lot of it! See? Twenty seventeen will mark the one hundred and forty second birthday of Stannis, and Lytham's so fucking old that no one cares anymore. 
All this means that there's not always been a better time to visit. That good old train that Arm and Elijah leaped low, larp, leprosy, leopard, jumped off, still runs today. Rackety and rickety, but thankfully without actual rickets. Just pop on on! Or is it in? At Preston Station, and you're away. We thank you for looking around, in and about, without, but never within, this town. I've been your host. I've tried. And we'll see you again, where we look around and dive depth into the disastrous disarray of dynamic and dirty Dundee. Z not near neighbour, Koala Lumper! Wow! Until then, remember, oh I do like to be seaside smile and wave and credits.